and welcome you to my restorative with home props class. My name is Ruth. I'm the creator of Yoga Room 108 Asana Yoga Sequencing Cards. So today we're going to go through a lovely restorative practice. And the benefits of restorative is that it accesses the rest, restore, and digest. So you might have heard of being referred to as the parasympathetic nervous system response. And what that's good for is that it, it creates optimum conditions for the body to have a, a strong immune system. It uh, relieves stress, tension, and anxiety. It rebalances hormones, and it relieves tension from muscles. But it also helps muscle recovery as well because it brings the muscles to a nice relaxed state, optimizes the oxygen to the muscles, and aids in healing. Um, I'm going to go through briefly the props that you'll need. We are going to find all the details on my website www.yogaroo.ie in the article called Restorative with Home Props, where it actually details how to make the props that you need for this practice. Um, so I have the bolster here, which is a rolled up wool or cotton blanket. And I also put there's two bath towels wrapped inside that too to give it a bit of um, a bit of height. Uh, these are my 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 bricks, my prop soft bricks. So it's just two books, dictionaries, or just thick reading books bound together in elastic bands. And then this is two tins of chickpeas wrapped in wool socks. So we're going to use them to prop the knees up and to weigh the arms down with it, which is lovely. And then just two fleece blankets. So we don't use these fleece blankets for the bolster practically because they're they're very soft. So they're lovely for just um, popping up the back or just um, behind the neck there or opening the chest and things like that. And you'll see it as we go through the practice. So we're going to start with a pose called Mountain Books. The way this is going to work is that I'm going to talk you into the pose. And then I'm going to time you for each pose will be holding for about three minutes. And then I'll talk you out of the pose and into the next one. In the three minutes, there's going to be a title screen up. So if you looked at the screen, it's just going to be the name of the pose. So don't worry if you see a title screen there. That's just me timing the three minutes for the pose. And we'll move on to the next one. And OK, so the first one, matching book. What you need is your two blankets and your bolster. So pop your bolster towards the end of your mat, or just kind of just past the middle, that's going to be only your knees. Then your pillow is going to be a blanket folded into four and just half rolled up, so that's going to just support the lovely curve at the back of your neck there. That way. And then our next one is going to be sitting just at the base of your shoulder blades there, so that little uh, triangle at the base of your shoulder blades. So we're doing a chest opener. We don't want it to be too high at the start of your practice. So we're going to just have um, a kind of folded up blanket in four and rolled up like that. So just it's surprising, it doesn't seem very high, but it will definitely open the chest nicely. Have your tins either side of you there. You might want to like, like to push and get into your hands. Okay? So just get into it. Use your hands to really gently guide you down. You might need to adjust that as you come down. And move things around. So my butt's just too high. It needs to be just underneath the creases of my knees. This needs to be underneath my shoulder blades. And you don't want your blanket behind you to be too high. You want it to be your head to be fairly flat on the ground, we're just supporting the neck there. Arms, slight external rotation of the arms, take a can in each hand, and just let the feet drop out to the side, and just really let gravity gently press you into your mat, and feel like the support of the ground underneath you coming up to meet you. Start to notice your breath now. And follow the journey of your breath in through your nose, down the back of your throat, into your lungs, and all the way into your belly. Feel your belly swell on the inhale. And 
and gently contract on the exhale. See, can you extend your exhale a little bit and really feel yourself drop into the support of the ground, the body becomes heavy with every exhale. Feel all your muscles melting. Bringing your attention back into the room now. Up your tins to the side, bend the knees up, gently roll it over to your right hand side, press your left hand into the ground, and gently lift yourself up to a seated position. Okay, so that's mountain brooks. So just pop your bricks out or your um, props out to the side of your mat. What we're going to do next is a gentle warm up of the whole body, just moving through all the joints, which is lovely to do before we take a series of holding poses. So coming onto your back, and then just bringing your knees up towards your chest and giving your knees a hug. Then cup a hand on each knee. Bring the knees wider apart, toes touching, and circle the knees on the ceiling. I'm just feeling for that lovely massage all along your lower back there. Making the circles nice and wide so you catch all the little areas on your back. And then circling the opposite direction. Making about three or four circles in each direction. And then gently let the feet drop down to the ground, bring the hands to the side. Let both knees drop to the left hand side. You can leave your arms here, or for a little bit more of a stretch through your arms, bring your arms into cactus position and gaze over your right shoulder. Reach that left or the right knee away from you now to feel a slightly deeper stretch all the way from that right knee up to the right armpit. 
deep breath here. Now, feel the difference between breathing normally and breathing in a twist. So it feels a little bit harder, but that's very good for the lungs. Inhale to bring the knees back up to center, and then exhale, drop both knees to your right hand side now, and then gazing over your left shoulder. Reach that left knee away from you now. You see the extra little bit of stretch I'm getting through my waist there by reaching that left knee away. Feeling that stretch all the way through the left side of the body now. Breathe into this. Inhale the knees back up to center. And then bring your hands down either side of the body. We're going to do some spinal rolls now. So plant your feet into the ground. On your inhale, you're going to lift your knees or your hips up and your arms up overhead. On an exhale, you're going to bring the hips down and the arms back down either side of the body. Inhale, lift hips and lift arms overhead. Exhale, bring the arms and the hips back down. Inhale, lifting arms overhead, lifting the hips. Exhale, hands and arms back down. Okay, we're going to come into a gentle inversion now. So we're going to use our blanket, hold it in four, and your bolster. So just give your bolster a little bit more of a pack to get it back up. And you might actually need two blankets just to raise the bolster up a little bit. We're coming into supported bridge pose. Okay, so come to a lying position and you have your bolster and your blankets ready. Inhale, lift the hips up and then just shimmy yourself down the mat a little bit until you get to the point where the brick or the bolster and the blankets are just underneath your hips and then gently bring your hips back down onto the bolster. You can use your tins here again for your hands. Hands facing up towards the ceiling, just a little bit of weight into the body. And then feel for this lovely gentle inversion. So inversion is great for the circulation, getting everything moving through the body detoxifying the body and also helping the immune system. So settling into this pose now.
able to bring your attention back into the room now. Bring your chin down to the side, press your hands into the ground, lift your hips up, and gently moving your bolster out of the way. Bring your hips back down. Rolling over to your right hand side, press your left hand into the ground, gently lifting yourself up to a seated position. So our next pose is called bolster twist. So what you will need is your bolster and place that along the top of your mat, in a little pat again, and you need another blanket, fold it up be folded up in about four. So making sure that when you're folding your blanket that there's no creases in the blanket. You want it to be nice and smooth so that there's nothing that's going to disturb your relaxation. So just placing that along the top of your bolster there. And fold it again. And you don't need your tins for this one. And have your, uh, your second blanket just to the side there. So this, in restorative, the body cools down very fast. So make sure that you have close by to you. Spare blankets, if you have them, or extra layers of clothes that you might need to put on as you progress through the practice. So this time I'm going to use my spare blanket, or the second blanket. So we do use it in some of the poses, but this one we don't. So drape the blanket over you and have it ready. So you're going to bring your right hip all the way up to the side of your bolster. My knees are, or my legs are in kind of a star shape. And then place the hands either side of the bolster. So you want to take a really deep twist here and inhale, lengthen through the spine. And exhale, you're going to trace the center of your spine down the center of the bolster. So you're hitting each of the vertebrae at the front of your body there. And coming onto your right cheek, hands either side of the bolster, hands facing down or hands facing up. And notice the weight of the clothes on your body. That's why blankets are nice. It stimulates little sensors on your skin. Tell us that you are safe, you are protected. And then notice the lovely cool air in the skin, your hands, the skin of your face, your arms, if you don't have a long sleeve top on. And the contrast between the two.
back now. Press the hands either side of the bolster to lift yourself up nice and slowly. And we're going to come straight into the left hand side now. So just take your blanket off, off you for a second and the easiest way is to swing the legs to the opposite side. So you're bringing your left hip just to the top of the poster there. Get your blanket ready. And the legs are in that star shape again. Inhale, lengthen through the whole spine to the tip of the crown. Remember, we're tracing the midline of the body, both the midline and the poster. And exhale, gently bringing yourself down. Coming onto your left cheek. Hands placed on the ground, either side of the bolster. Then now to come out of this second side, press your hands into the ground either side of you and really slowly bring yourself out of each pose. Drag it off you again, swing your legs around and come into seated. So that's poster twist. So our next pose is called blissful banana. So what you will need is the bolster this way. So horizontally across your mat. You're going to make a pillow for your head out of one of your book bricks and a blanket. And then you're going to have one of your tins overhead and one of your tins just to the side here. You can get your second blanket ready to put over you again. So you have your right hip up against the side of the boast there, or a little bit further away. So where you want the boast to hit is this curve of your waist here. It's going to support the curve of your waist as you lie in side position. You reach that right arm forward, and the arm sits in between the bolster and your pillow. You can place one of the tins in that right arm, the left arm reaches overhead, and holds on to the 
tin that we placed above the pillow. And if this doesn't feel nice on your shoulder, the arm overhead, or after a few minutes it starts to feel a bit uncomfortable, just change position. It's important to feel that you're the boss to change position if anything isn't feeling nice. So bring that left arm over the right arm if the overhead doesn't suit you. So in this pose, we're looking for that lovely stretch through the side waist there all the way through the left side of the body. Feel the skin stretching over that left hip bone. Feel the space between the ribs, rib cage of your left side. You can find the breath in the left side of the body. to come out of this pose then. So if you have the arm overhead, just bring it back over. Pop the two tins out to the side. Press that left hand now into the ground to lift you up, head coming up last, and gently coming up to seat. So similar to our last pose, we're just going to swing the legs around to come into the left side. So just bring the blanket over you, swing the legs around, Find your star-shaped legs again, if that feels good. Pop the blanket on you. And we're looking for the bolster again to be in the, the left crease, or the left side waist there. So draping the right arm overhead, so we want the tin above you, and the tin for the left arm. Reach the left arm out. The shoulder sits just between your pillow your and your bolster. Place the tin in the left hand and reach the right arm overhead just to hold on to your breath and your tin. And feel now for that lovely stretch, same as the other side, all the way right along the right side of the body now. 
stretching of the bones of the pelvis, space between the vertebrae. If you have your arm overhead, that stretch under the armpit. Come out of this pose. If you have the arm overhead, just gently bringing the tin back down, pop the tins out of the side. Press your right hand out to the mat. That's going to help lift you up. Gently lifting yourself up and then swinging your legs around to the front of your mat again. Okay, so for our next pose. We are going to, it's going to be a back release pose. So you're going to give your bolster a little bit of a pat, bring it back to life, and have a, a rolled up blanket at the top of your mat. So this is a lovely pose if you hold a lot of tension in your lower back. So what we're going to do is we're going to come onto our front body. So where we want the bolster to hit is kind of over the, the, the hip bones there. We're just going to gently lay ourselves down. Now that might be too high for me. So that there's lots of options with, with the position of the head. You can just take the head into, coming onto the right cheek. And then halfway through, we then change to the left cheek. And that's kind of stretching out the neck. Or what I prefer is just to keep the neck in a neutral position so that I can really relax and not worry about swapping the neck position halfway through. And I'm just bring my forehead onto the edge of a blanket and bring the hands into cactus position. Have a little bit of space between your legs here. And really feel the weight of the pelvis pressing into the support of the bolster underneath you. And feel that lovely release along your lower back there, your lower lumbar back. And it's a very good for the digestive system to be pressing into the digestive system, stimulating the peristalsis.
ready to connect this pose now. Think about what the most energy efficient way to get out of this pose will be as the body becomes just so relaxed. So press your hands either side of your chest there to lift yourself up. Moving really gently now. And coming up to a kneeling position. So our final pose before we come into Shavasana is supported by the Kanasana. So what we need for that is your blanket at the top of your mat. And you're going to just roll that up. So you want to get that reasonably high. And then you're going to rest your bolster along that. We need all our props for this one. You're going to place your book bricks either side of your mat there. And you're going to have your tins ready as well, so that they're going to support your legs. We're also going to make another blanket just to place at the top of your bolster there as a pillow for your head. And then bring moving slowly through your practice, making sure everything is nice and smooth. Coming to sit with your hips just at the back of the bolster, at the end of the bolster there. So this is where our third blanket would come in handy uh, to, to pop onto you as we start to come to the end of your practice. So if you do have a third blanket or an extra layer, I definitely would get that ready now. So you're going to bring your legs into Vatikanasana, so the knees bent, so the feet together, have a little bit of space between your pelvis and your feet here. So it's a little bit easier to bring the knees down towards the ground. You also might find that your hips are a little bit tight and wide, so you might need a lot more props. So just you know, use what you can, cushions, pillows, to bring something high enough so that it's going to support your knees in this position. We don't want anything just hovering in, in the air in uh, storage. Everything needs to be resting on the prop. Place the hands either side of the bolster and just really gently bring yourself down over the bolster. Hands facing up, a little bit of space between your arms and your body. And really see can you let go of the muscles of your legs and hips here. So for this lovely external hip rotation. Really let those shoulders melt down on either side of the bolster.
tension back into the very leg. Press the palms of your hands down into the ground, bending the elbows a little bit. Press into your forearms to lift yourself up nice and slowly. Want your hands. Come up to seated and then just place your hands either side of your knees just to really gently bring them back together. It can also be nice to come into a little cosmic egg pose, folding it. We're going to come into Shavasana now. So taking a Shavasana at the end of your practice. Pop your bricks out to the side, pop your tins out to the side. We're going to move our bolster back down towards the end of our mat, and that's going to be under our knees. Have a blanket beside you for warmth, and lower this, so you can either take this one completely away with you if you want to lie flat on your mat, or you can have it just very, very low to the ground. So you don't want your head to be flexed when you're in Shavasana. You want it to be quite low, but it's nice to have a little bit of softness underneath your head. Coming down, you position your bolster just under the creases of your knees. And getting your second blanket ready to cover you, so definitely layer up for this one. Cover those toes. Or keep socks on for the whole practice as well. And coming into Shavasana. Arms. Sternly rotate, palms up towards the ceiling, space between the arms and the body, space between the legs, the toes drop out to the side, the whole body melts into the support of the ground beneath. Back into the middle now as you come out of Shivasana. Just take a deep breath here. Very gently bring yourself back into the room, back into your day. Maybe really 
slowly rolling over to your right hand side. Bending the knees up, press your left hand into the ground. Lift yourself up, head comes up last, and coming into a comfortable cross leg position. Hands in prayer position at your heart. Looks to your third eye, to your lips, to your heart center, and namaste. Feel your practice. So I hope you enjoyed that. Don't forget to go to the article just to read more about the benefits of restorative yoga and more alignment cues in the posts that we went through and how to make the work practice. So if you have any questions at all, you can contact me at ruth at yogaroo.ie and you can follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook on yogaroo underscore Ireland. So you'll always find all my new tutorials and classes will be up on social media. And you can also subscribe to my YouTube channel and I have an Instagram channel too. Thank you.